The first time my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, she told me while she was feeding me carrots in my high chair. As the doctor told her over the phone, she saw the carrots begin to shake. The second time my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, she told me over the kitchen table my junior year of high school. Cancer is such a scary word for me and millions of families around the world, but today I'd like to tell you about a brand new technique used in cancer treatment called tumor paint and how it could change the lives of those affected by cancer forever. The National Cancer Institute claims that 39.6% of individuals will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lives. In 2012 alone, there were over 13 million people living with cancer in the United States. If this statistic is to hold, out of the 7,200 Belmont students, 2,900 may develop cancer at some point in their lives. So today, I'd like to tell you why tumor paint was developed, how it was developed, and what it means for the future of medicine, so that my mom, along with 13 million others, can be finished with cancer once and for all. Dr. Rich Ellenbogen, in a 2013 CNN article, explains that cancerous cells and healthy cells look remarkably similar during surgery. Imagine this, you're a surgeon working on a six-year-old patient with brain cancer. If you remove just a gram of her healthy tissue, she could be severely disabled for the rest of her life. On the other hand, if you don't remove all the cancer, she could wake up just to find out she's not finished with her battle quite yet. It can be a devastatingly hard decision for both doctors and patients. In 2015, The Guardian explains that the amount of patients who find out they have bulky cancer left after surgery is astounding. For brain cancer, it's around 50%. For other types of cancer, such as breast, it's around 30%. Many patients go under the knife just to find out they have to go through radiation chemotherapy next. So, how does tumor paint work? What is it made of and how does it work? Tumor paint is, it was developed by scientists at the University of Alabama that found that a protein in the venom of an Israeli death scorpion binds to cancer cells without affecting healthy tissue. Scientists discovered that if you were to compare this protein with a fluorescent dye, it could literally make the tumors glow under infrared light. This was groundbreaking for surgeons who could now finally see what to cut and what to leave in. The previously cited CNN article also goes on to explain that current technology, such as an MRI, can distinguish cancerous tumors from healthy cells when there are around a million cancer cells present. Tumor paint, on the other hand, can discover these tumors with less than 2,000 cancer cells present, making it 500 times more reliable than an MRI under operating conditions. It's revolutionary for surgeons who now literally have a beacon while they're in surgery to see what to cut and what to leave in. So then what does this mean for the future of medicine? Medscape Journal in 2015 explains that this drug has been trialed in uh, breast cancer, skin cancer, colon, and other types. So if this technique had been around in 1997 when my mother had a lumpectomy, she might have never had to have a double mastectomy 17 years later. Many cancer patients and their families always are living in fear of cancer returning and tumor paint could help stifle those fears so that they know that they've done everything they can to remove all the cancer. Dr. Colin Watts of the Department of Neurosurgery at the University of Cambridge is leading trials to discover whether tumor paint could be used as a transportation device for chemotherapy. It could literally be a vehicle for chemotherapy to go directly to the cancerous tumors. The years of chemotherapy having to be used all over the body might be far behind us once this technique is mainstreamed. So today, we've discussed why tumor paint was developed, how it was developed, and what it means for the future of medicine. And while I'm still lucky enough to have my mom in my life, my hope is that present and future cancer patients will never have to live in fear of their cancer returning ever again.